Hey guys and welcome to Production Den, I'm Jeremy. Today I'm going to show you how you can use a couple of shortcuts in the piano roll to speed up your workflow and put out more music. So let's dive right in. So let's all start at the same place. Let's go up to File, let's go to New. From Template, let's go under Minimal, and let's go into this empty setup. So now all we should see is a sampler. If you don't see this channel rack window at the, the start of it, just press F6 and that'll bring up this window. So the first thing that we're gonna do, a lot of times when you're creating a song is you wanna put in some instruments, some virtual instruments, because not everybody has every particular kind of instrument that would work for every situation. So maybe we wanna add in some synths. And to do that, you have to end up creating these chords and mapping out all of your notes in order to make your song. So we're gonna go ahead and add a synth. We'll go ahead and add citrus as our main synth. And we're gonna just use one of the presets that is in here. It can seem a little overwhelming when you open up this menu because it has so many. But we're gonna go down to this brass section and we're just gonna go ahead and pick this rough saw. Okay, and you can hear it when I do this. I mean, it's not the most amazing thing in the world, but it'll work for what we need it. Uh, so we're going to go in here, we're going to right click on this, and we're going to go to Piano Roll. Uh, now let's click F6 again just really quickly, because uh, I want to actually turn this down just a little bit. So we have this channel selected, let's hit F9, and let's go to uh, Channel 4, and hit Control and L, and that'll map this channel into the mixer. And the thing that we can do with this is actually just control the volume. So we'll just drop it down by, let's say, 7 dB for right now. Um, now we're going to go back into this piano roll window. And when you first open this thing up, it may not look exactly the same as mine does right here. It may look a little bit different. Uh, and so in order to have everything look the same, I'm going to show you how to kind of set this up to where it makes it easier to operate and work with. So we'll go down to helpers, uh, make sure that your um, note ghost channels are turned on. And then when you go to scale highlighting, this is a great tool, especially if you know the key that you're going to be working in. Because uh, what this does is it highlights the notes that are a part of the scale. So let's say we're going to be working in um, C major. So right now we're in G major. So let's make sure we move this up to C major. And now it's adjusted these kind of lighter spaces to show you the, the notes that are actually a part of the C major scale. And this can be a really helpful tool. This can be a really helpful tool uh, when you just kind of need a, a quick point of reference for where everything's at um, in relationship to, to other chords and all that other kind of stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and just create a, a basic chord pattern. Um, and we're going to start with uh... all right so here it's created some notes for us these notes are really short if we played this it's just a really quick thing uh, so if we want to lengthen these out let's go ahead and select them and how I did this was I held down control and I just dragged my mouse over top of that and it's basically turned the pencil tool which we're using right now into a selection tool and we selected those three notes. And now I'm just going to extend those out by grabbing the edge of one of them and moving it out over here. And you can also use this arrow to do the same thing. Um, it's not quite as clean just because it, it's a little more loose so it doesn't necessarily snap to the grid. And you may want that, you may not want that. Um, I'm keeping it clean for right now just because I want these chords to, to change with, with each of these measures. So the next chord I'm going to go ahead and create is the A minor chord. So I'm going to come in here, and then I'm going to create an F. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a G. All right, so basically this is a 1, 6, 4, 5 progression. And it's a common progression, but it's, it's really, really simple. Um, so if we go ahead and just play that really quick, I'll, I'll show you what it sounds like. All 
All right, so it's very basic in terms of what it's doing. I'm actually going to go back in here and cut this down a little bit more. That's a little loud for me. Um, so we'll go back into piano roll. So now let's say that we actually, we like this basic chord structure, but we want to change it up a little bit for the next pattern. So one thing that you can do when you do that is actually to hold down control, like we talked about before, and drag your selection over top of all these notes. And if you hit control B, it just creates a whole copy of that progression right up against that last section that you just did. And one of the things that I want to do here is actually create a little bit of a different flavor of some of these chords by creating inversions. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to select this bottom note by pressing control and clicking it. And then I'm going to hold control down and I'm going to press the up arrow. And that basically just moved that A from here up an octave to that next A. So we've just changed it to a, an inversion or an inverted chord from that A minor that was down here. Now C is in the root and A is up top. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to take this, invert it. And actually we're going to take this one as well and invert it. And then we're going to take this one and this one. And you can select two notes by hitting control and shift. So now I've got two of those notes selected. Now I hold down control, hit those two notes up and it's shifted both of those things up. So now if we go back and listen to this progression, just created some variety with chords that we were using for this project um, and I'm actually gonna add in some other notes just to make it a little more interesting to beef it out um, some nothing major um, just a couple couple quick fixes here not even fixes just additions and you'll notice I'm using these kind of lighter notes because I know that these are gonna be in scale um, in the key that we're working in and so that's really helpful if you just want to kind of experiment with some different sounds or some different chords and progressions and things like that. Um, all right, so now let's listen to what we have on this progression. sounded. I'm going to trade that out. I'm going to also trade out this one for a G. And then I'm going to also just put this one up. Alright, so let's listen to that really quick. So we just basically created a, a very, very simple progression. So the next thing that I want to do is actually open up another instrument. So we're going to click F6 again, go back into here. This time we're going to add in a 3X oscillator. And what we're going to do is actually just create a quick sub bass instrument. It's super simple to do. Uh, it doesn't have to be super complicated. We're going to keep all these default sine waves for these three oscillators. We are going to turn this one all the way down to 24 semitones. And you can tell it's all the way down to 24 semitones. If you look up here, it'll show you. See, we're at 21. Now we're down to 24. So I've just knocked these two down to 24, kept this one where it was. And now we will go into, actually, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and go into the piano roll. And so now with our ghost notes on, we can actually see what our bass line was through this whole progression, but I actually want to drop it down because it sounds kind of weird up here. It sounds a little bit better down there. So we're actually going to take that C, A, F, and G. And then we're actually just going to repeat that, except we're going to just throw this A up. Not like throw up, but you know what I mean. Um, And so now we've just kind of created this sub bass progression to go along with um, what we already have. So let's go back out to the um, 
project window. And here we are. Actually, let me do this. All right, so let's listen to that. say that we like that and we want to add in maybe another uh, instrument so let's come in here let's add in another synth let's do the GMS and let's take this one we're just gonna modify the sound that comes in it we'll just do this one as beast as well leave everything else the same and then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna come back into this one and we are going to copy this so we'll select all that, we'll press Control C, and then we'll do the drop down here, go to the GMS, and then we'll just go ahead and paste that in. And then we'll use our trick that we did before, and we'll push Control and push the up arrow, and we slid it into an octave that's above where the sub bass we just created was at, but we've now created a, another instrument that has another tone to it, and put that kind of in between where our top synth is with all the chords and this middle synth now is going to be kind of in between that and the sub bass so let's kind of listen to what we have right now <laughs> adds a little bit of extra texture uh, and one thing we're also going to do let's go ahead and select this so when you're in this window you'll see this is selected highlighted in green press shift and you're going to select that next one by clicking it on left clicking on it let's go back to our mixer window we're going to start here and if we press Control shift and l it's going to map those in in two separate channels so now we've mapped in all of our uh, synths into this window um, and that'll just help us as we move into the later stages where we're actually going to do some mixing. Um, so yeah, th this is just kind of a quick overview. Some other things that you can do in here. So if you were to, to have created maybe some shorter notes like this, uh, a, a nice thing that you can do, a, a nice um, trick to kind of quickly map these into longer note links is if you hit Alt and L, It'll lengthen those out to whatever that bar is really quickly. Um, you can do that. Um, if you wanted to change up something, there's another, uh, if you wanted to chop this up maybe into four distinct notes instead of just this one note, you could press Alt and U, and then you can uh, mess with this time mutilation, or time multiply, I don't know, mutilation, multiplier, or whatever. Um, and I'm gonna to go to this other setting and that'll create four notes instead of that. Uh, so that's another cool trick that you can do. Um, and one thing that we might actually do really quickly is if we go back out to our um, instrument rack, we press F6, we're gonna come in here and maybe create another, um, another synth. And let's bring in Citrus again. And let's grab from a preset, Let's grab something that is, I don't know, um, something more lead oriented. Uh, short synth. No. Let's try maybe something like this called Celestial. That sounds weird, but we'll go with it. All right, so we go ahead and press right click on this one and we'll go into our piano roll. And what's nice is we have this grid of what everything else has already done instrumentally from our other synths. And so now we can come in here and maybe start creating a little bit of a melody. Um, so maybe. Uh, so we know our. So we know we're, we're starting with an A minor. So start mapping in a melody um, or a lead part with this and one of the things that you can do is actually start messing with where it hits instead of just being perfect on the grid you can maybe slide it off and how you do that 
is um, you hold this alt, your alt key on your keyboard, and then you left click on it and you can slide it a lot more easily so it's not necessarily on the grid. And then you can do the same thing with actually the length of the note. Um, and that'll just give you more flexibility to, to maybe make something that has a little more swing to it or a little more of a different feel than just hitting straight on the grid because sometimes you just need to have a little bit of variety to make it a little different than what everything else is doing. So guys that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys found a couple tips and tricks that were useful to help you speed up your workflow. Thanks for hanging out again with us today and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.